Ramadan, the month when Muslims refrain from food, drink and marital relations during daylight hours, is a special time for Britain's 3 million Muslims. The fasting hours are long, up to 20 hours a day, because the holy month comes bang in the middle of a hot British summer. But the physical and spiritual rewards are worth it. Ramadan has been a fantastic time uh, in, the sense, in the sense that it's about spiritually connecting with the law of the heavens and the earth and detoxing your bodies. Ramadan is the month of prayer in the Quran, when Muslims do their best to cultivate willpower, discipline and self-restraint. They also increase their charitable activities and empathise with the poor, needy and destitute. We feed people, we, we sit together and we share food, we share food with everyone and this is part of it. Because they don't have it, we bring the food to them. They can't come to us, so we bring it to them. And that's the whole thing about Ramadan, which is, you know, you share and you care. But Ramadan isn't just about self-sacrifice. It's about sharing food with your family and friends. It's about increasing solidarity with your Muslim brothers and sisters at home and abroad. And it's about showcasing the beauty of Islam to the non-Muslim majority living in the UK. Certain headlines are putting the lives of many innocent people at risk. So what can we do? With Islam and Muslims regularly demonised in the British media, Ramadan is a golden opportunity for Muslims to showcase the true Islam. And I've been travelling around the country during the holy month in search of exactly that. Like many Muslims in majority non-Muslim countries, British Muslims can sometimes be the subject of unwelcome scrutiny. Sometimes being a Muslim in Britain can feel a bit like being under siege. So the month of Ramadan when Muslims fast from dawn to dusk can come as a welcome relief for many. A time for physical and spiritual renewal as well as an opportunity to improve relations between Muslims and non-Muslims alike. The Hussein family, who live in North London, are getting ready to break their fast. Like British Muslims all over the country, the Husseins have spent the last month fasting around 19 hours a day, so the evening meal will come as a relief. Mrs Hussein is also preparing some food to take round to her non-Muslim neighbours. Could you encapsulate what Ramadan means for you, uh, Zishan? Um, for me, it's reconnecting with my Lord. It's like understanding what is the purpose of your life, which is to worship your Lord and to be the best person that you can be. Someone can ask the same question. Yeah, what for me, it's about reprogramming, deprogramming all the bad habits I've gone and kind of reprogramming um, what's requ required of me from my Lord. Um, and it's just discipline. Fasting in Ramadan is one of the five pillars of Islam compulsory on every Muslim who is sane and mature, male or female. It has many physical, moral and social benefits, but most importantly, God has made fasting compulsory so that Muslims become pious, fearing and God-conscious. We know that the shaitans are locked up during this month. And for me, that's definitely something that I notice. It becomes a lot more easier um, to pick up the Quran, to spend a little bit more time on the Quran. And you notice like small habits changing. So when you're on the tube, like on my phone, I'll get the Quran out. Much, I'm much more likely to get the Quran out and start to read as I'm sat uh, commuting. And it's like you sort of, because um, you're sort of waiting for the time when, you're, when you open your fast, you realize that I can use this time to do things that are better than just wasting time watching TV or Facebook or whatever. I made uh, Ramadan gift bags for my, um, for my neighbours, my non-Muslim neighbours, and I distributed them uh, with just with a little note saying what Ramadan means to us. Uh, in terms of my Muslim community, yeah, we've had a lot of Ramadan, iftar invites, so we've been going to them. It's time to break the fast during a meal which is known as iftar. I join my hosts in a lovely and refreshing Asian dinner. Often Muslims will overeat at this time to compensate for what they've been missing out on. But the correct Islamic etiquette is to fill two-thirds of your stomach with food and drink and leave the last third empty. 
Tonight, at least, I think we've stuck to that. The Quran is a unifying factor for Muslims of all different traditions, sects and cultures. All Muslims believe it's the literal, unchanging word of God and they strive to live their lives according to its strictures. Now the recitation of the Quran is considered something of an art form all across the Muslim world. Ramadan was the month during which the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad and many Muslims will attempt to recite the whole book before the month ends. The very act of fasting is prescribed in the Quran so that, the holy book says, believers can learn piety. The rules of fasting are also set out in its pages, with those unable to fast due to illness, traveling and old age exempt. This is because God intends ease for us. The message of the, uh, the, the holy Quran is to, to guide the, the human being. That is the, the book of guidance. That is the book of uh, guidance to all universe, not just Muslims. Uh, because this book is not written by a person. It's written, it's the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the, from secure uh, source. So uh, it is the book of past, the book of, pre the book of present and the book of future. Muslims believe the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad over a period of 23 years. The holy book emphasizes the duty of mankind to worship, fear, love and obey the one God who created the heavens and the earth, the God of Muhammad, Jesus and Moses. If the Quran's central message is monotheism, it also teaches Muslims how to live a good life, which will ultimately grant them entrance into paradise, and how to avoid the sins which will consign them into hell. During the month of Ramadan, prayer is also a priority for Muslims. Believers are required to pray five times a day, even outside of Ramadan. But during the holy month, Muslims will often perform additional prayers, especially in the mosque. Again, the prayer is a combination of movements and gestures, which symbolize submission to God, as well as Quranic recitation, which reminds believers of his holy words. This is the month of revolution of Quran. So he wants us to attach yourself with Quran because he because the rewards are multiplied in the month of Ramadan. He has given the attraction to the people. OK, if you read, normally you are rewarded 10 times in this month, you will be rewarded 70 times. People think that being thirsty, if you do not eat and do not drink anything, that is fast. No. There is a fast of your stomach. There is a fast of your eyes. There is a fast of your ears. There is a fast of your tongue. There is a fast of your hands. And there is a fast of your food as well. Like the whole body should be fasting, not just your stomach. If you're hungry and still you're abusing people, Allah says, I have nothing to do with your thirst. This is the time that we spend more time on ourselves. Because the rest of the year, maybe we are very busy with you know day-to-day uh, -day work. But in the months of Ramadan, our physical activities, maybe our, you know, some of our uh, contacts reduce so that we have more time for our contemplation and you know, uh, prayer, recitation, and being with the community. Ramadan is a time for communities to come together. Every night at dusk, the fast is broken, most often with family and friends or in the mosque. It's a great opportunity for people who don't see each other much the rest of the year to get together. And it's also a time when Muslims belonging to different sects unify. I'm trying to think back, have I been to any Shia mosque? I don't think I have actually ever before. I mean, I know there are some slight variations in prayer, and I know that's the kind of the set, the timings for iftar are a bit different, but that's it. That's the extent of my knowledge actually. Uh, about Shias, but again, and Shias are a vast, you know, there are many different schools. I actually don't know much about Shias. Um, so yeah, let's see what happens. Raza Nadim is a Sunni Muslim, which means he belongs to the majority sect of Islam. But tonight he'll be breaking his fast at a Shia mosque, Islam's minority sect. 
Sunnis and Shias share a belief in the major tenets of Islam, such as God, the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad, but they may differ on other details of Islamic jurisprudence and history. In general, the two sects have coexisted in relative peace throughout Islamic history, with some exceptions of course. But with political events in the Middle East currently at boiling point, sectarian tensions can sometimes spill over. Without having unity, we would be not able to face our challenges. And indeed, we would be just challenging ourselves internally and exhausting ourselves without reaching to any conclusion. What terrorist groups want to do, they want to create division between the Muslims. They want to create, you know, an us and them situation between the Muslims and also then between the Muslims and the wider community. And if we are really fighting amongst ourselves, then that, that, that really, you know, makes them a winner. Uh, and we want to make sure that we believe in the same God, we, we believe in the same Holy Quran, and those who believe in the same, you know, scripture, you know, they are part of the creed of Islam. You know, and the concept of takfir is absolutely a cancer in Islam. You know, it's, it's eating us away. Shia Muslims break their fast a few minutes later than Sunni Muslims do, and they tend to combine the sunset prayer and the night prayer, called Maghrib and Isha in Arabic, unlike Sunnis. But these minor differences between the sects don't seem to bother Raza too much. It's different. I mean, it's, it's a, lot, a lot of similarities that you see in, in the way people pray. Uh, some similarities. But yeah, um, I didn't realize that they combined the Isha as well uh, during Ramadan. I thought, I thought that they had a Tarawih prayer, but I'm, I'm guessing that doesn't happen. But uh, yeah, and the food was good. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, better than my local mosque, that's for sure. Right now, you see Muslims being attacked left, right and center. The last thing you want is to be fighting amongst each other. And I think a lot of it is misunderstanding. So, I mean, you know, earlier they were doing the, trans, you know, the recitation of the Quran. There was no difference. It's all the same. People sitting there remembering God, you know, glorifying the Prophet. And it's, it's so many similarities. And for me, I mean, I, I knew that there were many similarities, but to see them in action, that is, you know, it's, it just kind of breaks a mental barrier. And I think especially for a lot of Muslims that are quite hardline sectarian on both sides of the camp, I think they should go to different mosques just because you realize we're not that different. And yeah, we all like our food at iftar time. <laughs> Islam is probably the most demonized religion in Britain and Muslims are regularly the subject of negative media headlines, usually associated with extremism and terrorism. Faced by this onslaught, it can be difficult for Muslims to get their side of the story across. But that doesn't mean they're not trying. Ramadan is perhaps the best time of year for Muslims to showcase their religion and that's exactly what several initiatives across the UK have done such as the Ramadan tent here in central London which welcomes up to 300 Muslims and non-Muslims every night to break the fast. And the idea behind these initiatives is very simple, that intimate human contact can break down barriers like nothing else. The Ramadan Tent Project is run by student volunteers and adopts a gentle, non-confrontational, even subliminal approach when showing non-Muslims what Islam is. It seeks to demonstrate the values of Islam by setting an example instead of preaching, to build bridges between cultures and encourage interfaith dialogue through the simple act of sharing a meal. We've been able to foster a platform for interfaith dialogue to explain, you know, the, the actual uh, beautiful values of our religion, you know, and, and yeah, and, and feel the community spirit most of all. I think, you know, when you look and you see, you know, just people of all different colours and races sitting on the floor eating together, I think, you know, it's, uh, I think that's what it's about. I grew up religious, so when I came across what was going on, I was really inter intrigued with the idea of fasting and praying, and um, so I wanted to learn more. And just the experience of meeting the best people I've ever, some of the best people I've ever met who have such sincere intentions, um, it made me want to get involved and learn more about their, what they were doing here and the, what Ramadan means. Every night during the month of Ramadan, a different speaker gives a short talk here to everyone gathered. Then after the Maghrib or sunset prayer, the fast is broken with rice, meat, fruit, deserts and tea. 
Sometimes Islam won't crop up in conversation at all. But friendships are built, curiosity is aroused, and perhaps stereotypes would have been broken. They grew up um, in Mormon, Latter-day Saints, so I think that I kind of really identified with the Muslim community by their standards, not drinking alcohol and fasting and things like that. So I didn't have any negative perceptions, but I think that being involved in a community helped me to understand the Muslim community even more and to be able to share that with my community back in the States. Stephen Mills and Steve Smith are getting a sneak preview of the feast that awaits them in a few hours' time. These two non-Muslim teachers from Oldham in the north of England have been fasting all day as part of an initiative called Share Ramadan, the brainchild of Manu Mia, another teacher. It's around 5.30 p.m., so they've already been fasting for around 17 hours, but they've still got four hours to go. You know, working in such a high Muslim school, I thought it'd be a brilliant experience for me to, to see what not only the colleagues that I have, but the, the kids that I teach go through. Uh, I just thought it would give me a bit of an insight into what they go through uh, and understanding. How's it been for you so far? So you've, you've, you, you didn't get up for breakfast, first mistake, right? Oh yeah, uh, I ate at about half past 11 last night. Um, I woke up at about two o'clock and, and I took about three or four pints of Vimto on. Um, <laughs> but no, I didn't wake up. Uh, I'm not feeling too bad actually. I, th I thought hunger would be the big thing because I've got a healthy appetite, what I say. Um, but it's been the thirst that's really, really challenged me. Did you know much about Ramadan? Uh, why Muslims fast? Um, this is my second year doing it, and I'd say the first reason I did it was because, coming from my background, I had very little idea about Muslim, Muslim religion, about Ramadan, the importance of it, why do it. So the first thing was I wanted to get to know more about it. That was my first reason for even doing it. And how are you finding it? Not too bad. Uh, hunger has been okay. Uh, lunchtime, walking around seeing some people eat, that was a bit difficult. Kind of had to turn away from that. Uh, thirst is the main one. Um, after about 10 or 11, it started to kind of kick in. Love a glass of water. And you kind of sometimes go to reach for it. And it's like, oh, no, I can't. Challenge, invite. Share. Share Ramadan. Share Ramadan has become something of a social media phenomenon. Challenge a non-Muslim neighbour or colleague to fast for a day, break the fast with them, and share the moment and experience on social media. It's got non-Muslims all across Britain experiencing the Ramadan fast. First day, I'm always told, is the hardest of the fast anyway. I was approached by one of my colleagues, Nano Mir, to take part in the challenge. It's a great way to get to know people, of course. Share Ramadan started when the, the Muslim community were getting a lot of bad press. One thing I realised, you know, the media is on our side and saying so much things and certain headlines are putting the lives of many innocent people at risk. So what can we do? You know, you have children and uh, would you want to leave them behind? Wealth or money? You know, why not? You know, a society that is just, that is fair, and that is safe. And that will only come about is, is when there is an understanding and, and the, the, the barriers of fear and suspicion when they have disappeared from our society. It is that, for me, it's been that sacrificing things that you take for granted every day, like, you know, people struggle for water, uh, and I can just go and get one any time, a glass of water or a drink of water any time I want. Um, people struggle for food, but you know, at the end of this, I know I'm going to sit down with 10 or 12 friends and have a, a, a lovely meal. Before I started working in the job I'm in now, all I knew about the Muslim faith was what I read, typically on media, newspapers, whatever it be. Um, then I've actually become friends with them, and I'd like to think with Nana who's invited me into his house to do Shah Ramadan, not only have I found out about the Muslim culture, but I've become closer with him. Uh, with other friends, so we can talk about anything, it doesn't have to be about Muslim, but it just means that there's not that kind of them and us type culture. 
A few hours later and at last it's nearly time to break the fast. Nanu lays on a delicious Bangladeshi meal in his front room, enough to satisfy any appetite, while around a dozen Muslim and non-Muslim colleagues and friends laugh and joke. Finally, it's time to tuck into the food. Stephen and Steve are obviously very relieved men. It's the last Friday of Ramadan and thousands of Muslims are preparing to march through the streets of central London condemning Zionism and supporting the Palestinian resistance struggle as they do every year during the annual Al-Quds march. Now Ramadan is obviously mostly associated with spirituality and quiet reflection but it's also a time when Muslims increase their efforts to promote justice in the public arena. This year's Jerusalem Day March took place a year after Israel's war on Gaza, which killed over 2,000 Palestinians and devastated the infrastructure of the besieged territory. The Palestinian struggle against Israeli occupation and aggression has always been at the center of Islamic politics and has unified Muslims from different nations and traditions since Israel was created. The march climaxed outside the US Embassy in London, where, again, the centrality of the Palestinian cause for Muslims around the world was emphasized. And today the people of Muslim countries around the world stand shoulder to shoulder with moral-seeking people in the support of the Palestinian nation and gather in the streets to remind the world of the barbaric crimes and atrocities of the occupying Zionist regime. Zionist is a criminal conspiracy a colonizing project which will only be complete with the disappearance of the Palestinian people. This year's Ramadan also saw the high-profile launch of an attempt by a Sufi Muslim group to counter the Takfiri ISIL narrative, which has attracted a tiny minority of British Muslims. Pakistani scholar Tahir al-Qadri unveiled a draft school curriculum in London which condemned ISIL and extremist ideology. Qadri, who has previously declared Takfiri's non-Muslim, said it was essential to teach people that terror was a violation of Islam. Whatever philosophy and ideology is being propagated and practiced and enforced by ISIS or other terrorist organization, in part it was Al-Qaeda and Taliban and all those people, they are, this is just an enmity and violation of Islam and Quran and the Prophet's conduct. The initiative wasn't without its critics within the Muslim community itself, who said that it placed the emphasis on the Muslim community to clean up its act, while downplaying major factors behind radicalization, such as British foreign policy, Islamophobia and racism. Nevertheless, there is general consensus amongst British Muslim leaders that the ISIL mentality and the Takfiri narrative needs to be driven out of the community. Ramadan has been a very difficult and challenging time for Muslims. We've had you know, killings in Kuwait, we had you know, murder taking place in Tunisia and other parts of the globe. So that kind of really affects the Muslims living in this country, in Leeds, because you know, our name has been tarnished, our, our faith has been abused. Those who commit murder in the name of God, they are absolutely an affront to human dignity and an insult to God. As the holy month of Ramadan draws to a close, British Muslims will really look forward to the festival of Eid. Now, Eid lasts about one or two days and is characterized by lots of socializing, delicious food and fun activities for the children. It's a joyful occasion which marks the end of a month of really hard self-sacrifice. And British Muslims will hope that they can carry forward the lessons they've learned during the month of Ramadan and implement them during the course of the rest of the year.